Uh, we'll be joining Amos Joseph, who is a journalist and founder of Footballers Connect uh, Initiative on Skype. We'll be talking about this. If it's online, uh, let's know. Uh, so we'll have this discussion concerning um, Gennar Bro. Hi, Amos. Yeah, good morning. Uh I'm very well, Udo. Mm -hmm. uh, nice to be on the show again. Yeah, nice to have you with us on the show. Hope you're keeping safe out there. Uh, well, I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about Geno Raw. Now, uh, we hear that he has agreed terms with the NFF and he will continue as a Super Eagles coach. And I learned the contract is for about two years. What's your take on this, knowing that uh, over time there's been a lot of confusion over the contract situation? Yeah, so what I would say is that uh, it, it is very good that... The, 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 the NFF have decided to renew the contract of General Raw. Uh, so what General Raw is doing now, or his obligation, is to ensure that it takes us to the next level. Now, I mean, what's the next level, right? Everybody has clamored that, oh, General Raw does not include uh, home-based players in his squad. He doesn't yeah. believe in home-based players. You know, there are too many um, talks here and there, but... I mean, someone who has met up with the standard, you, you gave him, a, you gave him a, a target of taking you to the semifinals of the Nations Cup, mm -hmm. he did, right? Yeah. You gave him a target of going to the World Cup, he has done it. But what exactly is the KPI on home base players? Mm -hmm. A lot of people just come out on the media and say, oh, General Rush should include players in his media, General Rush should, uh, should, should include play, uh, home base players in his squad. Mm. Oh, and General Rush came out to say, hey, I have given about 25 players an opportunity to be a part of the squad. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. What we've seen so far is people leaving Africa, people leaving the shores of Nigeria. Once they get into the national team, it becomes a springboard for them to join a, a, a team in, in Europe. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you need to cut this man some slack. Look at his stats. Out of 40 games, he has won about 29 or thereabout, or 23 uh, or thereabout, 23 wins. So what else do you expect? He has done above expectation. Yeah. So what else do we want? Maybe we need to have an insight as to what the contract is. Maybe we need to have an insight as to what exactly are the specifics that the NFF has put in the contract to say, oh, so that we'll be able to measure him correctly. True. It is very difficult and unfair to measure somebody that you don't have an idea what his contract is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like employing somebody, you employ somebody and you say, oh, these are your these are your daily tasks. If the person does not perform A, B, C, D, you fire him. But mm -hmm. if he has done A, B, C, and you, like somebody like me, or an ordinary Nigerian out there, we don't have an insight as to what his, what his contract entails. We cannot judge him rightly. You know, what we've also seen recently, in recent times, is, is, is the issue of... Um, uh, oh, should we even give him a contract at all? Why don't you just give him a contract and let the man continue? He has done quite well. And mm. General is going to remain as the longest serving manager in Nigeria. How about that? Mm. Okay. Now, talking about um, General and the coaching role now, some people think we do not need a foreign coach. Some have said we need to uh, invest more in our local coaches because we're spending so much money on the foreign coaches and we're not achieving a whole lot. But General has kind of broken that and I think he has achieved more than some other coaches. But of course, he hasn't won anything major for Nigeria. Do you think we should go back to local coaches? One thing I'm going to say is Keshi is the one that has reignited this fire again. Right? Mm -hmm. Since Keshi went to the Nations Cup, he conquered Africa in 2013. And then everybody felt like, why do we need a foreign coach? Even to the <laughs> presidency level, you know, it became a very big issue that yeah. it, everybody started debating it. Do we really need a foreign coach? See, it is not about foreign coach. It is about the pedigree of the coach. Mm -hmm. Where does he coach? Which players has he dealt with? What is the experience? What has he done? What is his performance, both mm -hmm. on the global scene and in Africa? You know, what experience does he have? Now, today we are talking about Ari Redna, but I know we're still going to come to that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you want to judge a coach based on his experience. Yeah. Our local coaches, what experience do they have? At what level are they coached? Look at somebody like uh, Emmanuel Amonike. Mm. He, he left Nigeria to Tanzania and made his mark, you know, even if he didn't take them to where they wanted to be. True. But, you know, we know that he is capable, right? Mm -hmm. We're beginning to, to, we're beginning to uh, look inwards to say, hey, guys, we have people who are capable. We have people who are experienced. I mean, they just have to get to that level 
where we can trust them enough. Before Keshi was given the job uh, of the national team, he was coached at other countries. He, he, he coached Togo, mm -hmm. right? You know, he had the experience. We need somebody who has the experience, who has that proven trajectory, who has that proven track that we can say, oh, yeah, this guy, we are sure that he can take us to the next level. He can take us beyond where we want to be. Mm -hmm. How many local coaches? What are we even doing to impact our local coaches? How mm -hmm. much education do they have in terms exactly. of the game in this present time? Mm -hmm. If you take a local coach to the World Cup, are we confident that he can... He can defeat a, 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 a an England team. He can defeat a Brazilian team. Mm. Now, I'll cite an instance. Sometime last week, um, it was published by the Moroccan FA. Their coaches are understudying. They are studying some of the top coaches in the world. Mm. Jose Mourinho, uh, Pep Guardiola of this world. You know, mention them. This, these are the things that they are doing for capacity building. But for yeah. us here in, the past of, in this part of the world, we need to shift our focus from competition and focus on development. True. See, no, no success comes overnight. The reality is we are a nation that likes magic. I Honestly, we love magic. <laughs> we like things to boom at once. For real, you don't, want, you don't want to prepare. We don't want to develop. We don't want to build... But we, we just want a coach that will just come and win us the World Cup. Oh, go and get Mauricio Pochettino. Go and mm. get Pep Guardiola. Go and get Jose Mourinho. Let him come and win the World Cup. No, 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 no. no. Look at the likes of Spain. Look at the likes of, of uh, England. Look at the likes of France. What did they do? They built their coaching. They built their football system. Football is a whole. It's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an it's entirety. You yeah. cannot separate the coaching from the player development, from the grassroots development. What are we doing? Hmm. How, okay, we are. We say we are bringing uh, coaches from La Liga, people from La Liga to come and train our coaches. What is How the impact? How many top coaches have they? Hmm. Have they trained coaches who can take on the national, the senior national team? Are those the kind of coaches that you want to take to handle the 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 the, 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 the senior squad? Hmm. Well, what did we get when hmm. we when we when we brought somebody like Sunday Olise? The same people who say, oh, bring in Sunday Olise, bring in uh, Daniel Amokachi. They've got the experience. These guys will come. And the same Nigerians will still come back and say, oh, but these guys are not good. <laughs> because we don't want to sacrifice. We don't want yeah. to lose at any point. Nigerians don't like to lose. But True. what exactly do we want? That's why I keep saying that what are the key performance indicators that were given to Genedro? Mm. What, okay, Genedro, at the end of your squad, at the end of your screening, or maybe at the end of your training, if you're preparing for a Nations Cup, mm. five of five players from the national from the NPFL mm. must be in your team. Is that what we are saying? <laughs> are we stating specifically? Are yeah. we stating categorically that hey, five players from the 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 NPFL must form the fulcrum of the team? Is that what? We're, so these are the things that we can say. Oh, General has failed because he has not included five players, players from the NPFL. The, the ultimate. Yeah, the, the, the ultimate is we will come back and say, oh, uh, if he was a, if he was an home base coach, he, he will be able to see mm. what they are telling Genero is Genero, come and watch the Nigerian uh, Nigerian Premier League. Mm. I was no. reading an article this morning. Uh, okay. Joseph Yobo, the former captain, he was saying, oh, that there are players in the MPFL that can make the team, and then he made reference to Keshi's team. But that's a talk for another day. I mean, you know, I, I was going to talk about the Nigerian Professional Football League now. Switching away from football to basketball, I remember when I talked to Jordan Wara, the uh, then head coach of the Tigers, and I asked him, "Why don't you pick players yeah. from the local basketball league?" And he said, "Please show me where these players are." In a league that is not running, we don't, it's not consistent. Now, switching over to the Nigerian Professional Football League, how many players can break into the national team? A few of them have been given the chance, but they failed woefully. Remember the Chan Eagles, the Chan Eagles. So, what do you expect of Gennard Raw now that he's taken up this new contract? I mean, for me, what I expect Gennard Raw to do is to honestly uh, give the players a look in, the players in the MPFL a look in. But he has said that maybe the players he's looking for uh, are not the players in the mpfl are not really top notch for the super egos that he is looking at mm. but i mean when we give him the opportunity to say okay you have been asked to stay in nigeria let him stay in nigeria watch the mpfl you cannot say that the players in the mpfl are not top notch 
Of course, these these players are top notch. It might just be a little bit of technicalities. It might just be a little a little bit of uh, technical input, so that these players can gel with all the players. That, see, the players who play in Europe, the kind of information they have, players locally don't have it. Mm. And I'm not sorry to say this. That, that is the fact. The kind of information that these players in Europe have, mm. the players locally do not have it. But it doesn't say that the players based on are not good enough. No, mm. they are good enough. They are not just as well informed as the players abroad. abroad now, yeah. getting raw, coming down to Nigeria, please, it needs to take some time out, discover some more players, just like his assistant, uh, Joseph Yobo, has Yobo. said. Discover some more. If you, and the, 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 the bane of our league, one of the bane of our league is that it is not shown on TV. It is not televised. Exactly. People don't even know these players. How many matches does Genero want to watch except he wants to kill himself? <laughs> does he want to travel from Maidugu, travel to Sunshine Stars, mm. travel to Lagos to come and watch MFM? Yeah. I mean, he needs to look for scouts, proper scouts. Someone was saying, who are the scouts that the NFM okay. has employed for exactly. Genero? See, scouting is different from, is different from being an agent. What we have here and there is play coaches who are agents. How many of them are scouts? How many of them are qualified scouts, hmm. right? I also started um, a course in scouting sometime last year. And I'm looking to complete it because you look at players differently. You begin to look at players differently. Raw needs to employ scouts who will discover real talents. There are real talents in the Nigerian professional football. Wow. football league, mm. But it takes time to discover them. Wow. And you just can't make a blanket statement and say there are no players in there. I, do, I would disagree to that. Mm. They may just not have as much information as you do. As and the then, ones abroad. But for me, I, I, I can't critique enough. <laughs> Genero enough. I can't criticize him because mm -hmm. I don't know what his contract says. All I can say is that Genero, take us to the World Cup. What we know is that, oh, he has been given a contract that is going to last until 2022, right? Yeah. Qatar. Take us to the Nations Cup. Take us to the World Cup and let us perform better. Let us begin to see a very good playing pattern. Mm. In, the, in right. the 94s that everybody makes reference to, they say, oh, we play this way, we play from the wing, we play, oh, it's Janine Bangida on the right, you have uh, Garba Lawal on the left, you have Emmanuel Lamunike, you have these guys who are making swings from right, left, and center. But, I mean, you can't tell specifically how the Super Eagles play right now. This mm. is what we're saying. We want to know what pattern, what, what tactics... Do you play? Be if, I, if I wake up from my sleep, if, if anybody asks me, what tactics do the Nigerian football uh, team play? Mm. I, right. I'll be able to. I'll be. I'll begin to explain because it's not so explicit, right? Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Amos, for speaking with us this morning.